Hi, Mario here. First of all, I want to thank my patrons for supporting my work. Welcome to Uxmal, located in Mexico. Uxmal is situated on the peninsula of Yucatan. This area is full of ancient so-called Mayan structures. Uxmal is one of the larger sites on Yucatan. Curious enough, Uxmal means built three times. An intriguing name. What is there behind this name? Was it built three times just recently? Or was it rebuilt three times? We have examined Uxmal minutely and discovered interesting facts about the site that reveals its true age. What appears to be the case? The people that are called the Mayans are not the original builders of these structures. They are just the renovators of what they have found. The original builders are lost in an ocean of time, many tens of thousands of years ago. This detailed map of Uxmal was the basis for our research. This map is calibrated to true north. All structures are accurately drawn in dimensions and in orientation. Most people who look at this map do not see what we are seeing. At first, all structures are clockwise oriented. Clockwise orientation is everything between 0 and 45 degrees east of true north. The orientation pattern seems chaotic and despite its chaotic orientation there is not a single structure to find that is counterclockwise oriented. That is curious regarding its chaotic pattern. The method that we have developed can be applied to this typical situation of Uxmal or any other ancient site that has similar chaotic patterns. Here you see pole 2 to 5 that we have discovered. And these poles are no magnetic poles, no, they are geographic poles. Or in other words, ancient spin axes of the Earth. Today the Earth spins around pole 1. But over the last few hundreds of thousands of years, the Earth's crust was heavily deformed, meaning that the spin axes were at other locations on the crust. The crust, which is just thin, light and brittle, compared to the rest of the 99% mass of the Earth, re wraps itself once in every while. This process of deformation has been called ice ages. Many ancient structures are still pointing to these areas, which are excessively dense nodes of intersections. Our method has severe consequences as to how old these structures originally are. They might have been renovated many times on top of the much older foundations, but the foundation remained in its original orientation despite the renovations. We have collected the data of virtually all ancient structures in a database. Our conclusions are mathematically inescapable no matter what mainstream science claims about these ancient structures or about the capacities of ancient Homo sapiens. The things that archaeology presents to the public are no thoroughly tested scientific facts. No, they are mere ideas what they believe themselves. The public thinks that archaeology is a science. Thanks to new technologies, they start to work more scientifically. But their paradigm has got stuck somewhere in the 18th century. It has become a belief system instead of a hard science. Their claims about stone structures are untestable, hence it is no real science. Stone structures cannot be dated other than our probabilistic method that we have developed. Dating megaliths is really one of the toughest problems in science. It takes 
tremendous mathematical work to get a glimpse on the magnificent vastness of the ancient world. The magnificence of the ancient world is beyond comprehension. How did we manage to prove the real age of Ushmal? The first thing that we have done is to examine this map in detail. All structures are solely clockwise oriented over a wide range, which is curious. So we measured the important structures on this map in terms of orientation relative to true north. In total, we counted 52 measurements, totally taken randomly on this map. If Ushmao would have nothing to do with any of our ancient poles, it would be very unlikely that there could be any match or correlation between the two totally different phenomena, so to speak. The range of Ushmao's orientations measures out in this way that I show here. It starts a little above pole 2, goes well beyond pole 4, a little into the segment of pole 5. Ushmal has an orientation range of 28 degrees from plus 6 up to plus 34 degrees. This range focuses excessively on pole 4. As seen from Ushmal's location, the areas of the poles are relatively small compared to the areas in between the poles. The areas in between the poles represent long periods of great turmoil when the crust is deforming. So logically, if there would be no correlation at all between Ushmal's orientations and our pole positions, we would expect that more orientations of Ushmal would be pointing to these areas in between the, the poles, the yellow areas. Why? Because this area is larger and so more orientations would end there. But that appears not to be the case. 30 structures on Ushmal are pointing to the small regions of our poles. and only 22 structures are pointing to the larger, yellow-marked areas in between the poles. So the yellow regions are larger, but have less orientations to them. The probability for this curious pattern to be just the result of coincidence is around 0.6%. That means that we are for more than 99.4% certain that these two patterns are relating to each other. Ushmal follows, roughly speaking, the migration of the poles. It starts briefly at pole 5 and focuses predominantly on the poles 4, 3 and 2. During periods of unrest there is hardly anything built, while during periods of tranquility, that is one of the poles, building activity increases again. This is entirely normal that during periods of crisis, people tend to be more occupied with survival than with construction activities of temple complexes. Ushmal's most active period was during that of Pole 4. Pole 4 was the period when the southern tip of Greenland was located on the spin axis, which was between 240,000 and 270,000 years ago. During this period of stability of around 30,000 years, human civilizations came globally to a high rise. We've done a similar research to Chichen Itza, also in Mexico, to Gobleki Tepe in Turkey, and to Konenbriga in Portugal. They all follow similar patterns of reorientations of their structures. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. Bye bye!